to understand the translocation of organic solutes we have the different here is mass flow hypothesis which is also called as pressure gradient hypothesis this theory was given by scientist munch in 1929 he explained the pressure gradient hypothesis this pressure flow or the pressure gradient hypothesis is explain us how would the transport of food material occur from source to the sink we know very well that is side of photosynthesis and that's why leaf is considered as a source of organic solutes whereas sink it's a stem or root it is the site where food is utilized or stored that is called as a sink so movement of food always occur from source to sink another very important thing we are talking about the transport of organic solute simply the food which is synthesized in the plant body remember that food is always synthesized in the form of glucose transported in the form of sucrose sucrose is a disaccharide this disaccharide is a non reducing sugar it generally do not react with other substances and that's why it is the non reducing sugar in the form of sucrose only food is transported through the phloem food is stored in the form of starch and that is polysaccharide so the transport of sugar occur through the phloem in the form of phloem sap that is mainly sucrose leaf is the site of synthesis of sugar inside the leaf in the mesophyll region chlorenchyma tissue is present which is mainly concerned with food synthesis chloroplast are the main site of photosynthesis now very important thing we can understand food is synthesized in the mesophyll region which is exactly adjacent to the vascular bundle if we draw you can observe this is the xylem or we can say the tracheary vessel adjacent to that is the phloem these are the companion cells and near to that this way this is mesophyll region chlorenchyma is present food is synthesized here in the chlorenchyma and that food is transported towards the vascular bundle but this food material which is in the form of sucrose that is non reducing sugar need to cross the companion cell to enter into the sieve tube the main part of the phloem remember that food need to cross there is companion cell and then after it get deposited inside the sieve tube that is the part of the phloem remember that this transport of food material through the companion cell is by active transport the energy is always utilized in that now when the food material get deposited inside the phloem or the sieve tube the water potential in the phloem decreases when concentration increase water potential decreases and as a result of that 
water from the surrounding xylem also deposited here inside the sieve tube and this way sugar plus water constitute that is phloem sap and this phloem sap form inside the phloem of the leaf food get deposited inside the phloem as a result of that the turgor pressure inside the phloem of the leaf increases with compared to that of the turgor pressure present in the phloem of the stem so this way the gradient of turgor pressure develops here in the leaf there is a high turgor pressure is that due to presence of phloem sap in it and now this phloem sap is pushed towards here in the region of the stem in the stem the phloem is present having now this phloem sap when food is deposited towards the stem the turgor pressure in the stem again increases with compared to that of the root and again due to the gradient of turgor pressure this food material is again pushed towards the root and this food material is deposited here inside the root so due to the difference in the turgor pressure food passes towards the root from the source to sink very important thing this is the pressure turgor pressure reduces gradually from leaf to stem stem to root and that's why this theory is called pressure flow hypothesis or pressure gradient hypothesis very important thing along with the water and organic compounds some mineral solids may also transport we know very well through the phloem water sugar and some amount of solutes or salt may also transport and this is the mass flow or n mass a hypothesis we can say now what happens in the root when this sugar is used by the root cells for their own physiological or metabolic processes the water potential in the phloem of the root reduces as sugar is used up so in the phloem the water is present and which constitute the hypotonic solution and now from the phloem of the root water moves out towards the different cells of the root by the osmosis and this way water again enter from the phloem to xylem in the root and then this way the transport of food is possible another thing why we can say the transport in the phloem is bidirectional so answer is when food is synthesized in the leaf it move towards the stem from stem to the root but in the condition of autumn when there are no leaves found there is no synthesis of food at that time the food which is stored in the stem or the root is utilized by the plant to tide over this condition and in such case when there is no food synthesis occur from the root and the stem the food moves in opposite direction so we can say food can transport from leaf to stem stem to root that is one direction but in the need from the root it's also move towards the stem and other branches of the plant and that's why this is the bidirectional movement of the phloem or phloem sap we can say thank you